what we are going to do is we are going to isolate the curds from the whey in this skim milk. Um, so I have added two gallons of just regular fat-free milk um, into this big pot and got it up pretty high in temperature. Um, when Belgique taught me to make paneer, um, we would always get it to a boil, which is kind of, you gotta be a little careful when you bring milk to a boil because it can burn really easily. And actually you would probably want a much more high quality pot than the one we have here in the community kitchen because you'd want a nice thick bottom, which would also help it not burn. Um, and the reason for that, of course, when you're making cheese is that you don't want the unpleasant taste of the burn. But when making paints, the reason is that you don't want little flecks of burned milk in your paint because it will affect the color and also the consistency. What we're looking for with the casein mixed with the lime is that the lime and the casein actually have a chemical reaction where together they form what's called calcium caseinate, which is a glue. So it's going to create this almost a latex feel to the paint which you all will get a sense to feel when we do the application. But it really has much more of a smooth, um, resistant quality to the paint. Whereas the Elise is very smooth and matte. It almost feels like you're touching you know, soft minerals, mm -hmm. right? It feels almost kind of fabric-y or something. Mm -hmm. um, the lime casein has a much different feeling to it. It has a much more kind of plasticky surface feeling to it. And that is the reaction of the casein, the proteins in the milk, with the lime. We're gonna line this colander, which I have here in the sink, with this cheesecloth. And this is gonna capture our mixture once we isolate the curds in the whey. All right, so what we are gonna do is slowly, slowly, slowly add an acid to our hot milk mixture on the stove. And you can also use white vinegar. You really want to dribble in a, a light stream. Like you're not pouring lemon juice in there because um, it really will happen quickly because that's a strong acid going into a pretty neutral milk. Um, and what will happen as you mix is you'll start to see little chunks. Like it'll almost be this mysterious floating that's happening underneath the surface. And you're like, did I just see a little floating chunk, and then you add a little more lemon juice and you'll see it just resolve. And the liquid will end up being almost a clear grayish yellow liquid, whey, and then we'll pour the whole thing through the cheesecloth and isolate the curds. We're starting to pull out the solids from the milk. If you look at the quality of the liquid, it's still very uniformly white and opaque, which means we can still pull out more solids from that liquid. So we're gonna add more lemon juice, but this is the part where you really, really wanna gently titrate it in, so don't dump a ton. Um, but put a little and mix, and this is the part where you kind of go a little more slowly. Yeah. See? Clear liquid with stuff spinning in it. All right, so let's go ahead and isolate this. So we're going to pour. So usually I do a couple layers of cheesecloth because um, it's just more stable to capture all of the curds. Folks can see the curds isolated. And so we're gonna um, squeeze the, out all the moisture and then we'll blend it up and mix it in with our lime. We don't really need all of the moisture gone because we're not looking to dry this out. We're looking to right now reconstitute it and put it into a liquid thing. So we don't actually have to remove all the water. Um, although we are going to rinse this just to see if we can get some of the lemon juice out so we're not adding extra lemon juice into the situation of our paint. That's amazing. This is really neat if anybody wants to take a look. This is great. It's getting really creamy. It's kind of like a cream as opposed to the chunky cream. Mm -hmm. This is the total amount of casein that we have for this particular exercise. And this is going to be plenty for the wall that we want to cover. We'll probably have some paint left over. So how would you begin going about thinking through that? recipe, knowing that this is your set amount of casein that you have. So that's a determining factor. So you just half that much, you put lime putty and half as much water. Exactly. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So we're going to have about a whole yogurt container. Woohoo, look at that. 
So we're going to add one container of this on the half of the line. All right, everyone. So one container of casein is being added. Yeah. All right. We may have added more water in our casein. So, so just temper less. it in, or just temper okay. it in, and we'll, we'll see how we like the consistency. And if somebody wants to grab a little chip brush, we can see how we like the consistency. The casein is an additive that we put into many paints and plasters. Um, you can add casein to a clay paint or a lime paint um, as an additive to increase flexibility, strength, in some cases water resistance slightly um, because of the fats and the protein reaction, um, which is why we're going to use it in the kitchen because it'll be a bit more durable than the Alesis. Now, one of the things about a lime casein paint is that it will go on very translucent. It will seem almost clear. But as it dries, it grows in opacity. Yeah.